for your getting on a bill with Japanther that this might not you meeting never might have never happened yeah actually my solo project played I played my first show with Japanther in Michigan and then high places ended up playing our first show with Japanther I used to me I made some of their beats like when they first started so they were old friends of mine mm -hmm. and um, and uh, they invited you to come to New York is that what happened after you played with them in Michigan mm -hmm. no I met uh, their roadie he played oh. in this band the death set he was mm -hmm. one of the founding members and uh, they were they were from Australia and that they live in the States and um, then uh, I was in New York for a bassoon lesson in like December 05 <coughs> and I went and saw a death set play and Rob was there and I uh, was introduced to Rob then and then I set up a show for him in Michigan and then we just stayed in contact and I ended up you know, I knew he had a big place here in Brooklyn, and I was like, we need a roommate. You know, <laughs> maybe like we could tour their solo projects or write a couple songs together. And we were like, well, let's just do a band together and book a little tour, and then I'll go to grad school or go move to Chicago and live with my sister or something. Yeah, so I mean, we, did we, you initially write a batch of songs, or was it a little by little? No, it was a really sudden. Like We actually we wrote like first, six songs in like three weeks or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our first, we started booking the tours to solo projects, and then I had a show just me solo actually in North Adams Mass with, with Japanther actually mm -hmm. and I was like a couple like literally like three days before the show I was like let's just do a band I don't want to play solo tonight because I just felt like you know we were going to tour as two solo projects and then so we like played that show like last minute we played like a seven minute set or something of just like really weird songs and then we um, Kraftwerk cover. We did a, we tried to we did it as a joke a cover of Autobahn just to like pad it out. But With we, my bassoon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It was wow. kind of it was kind of a joke, but like essentially like we came back and then we're like okay well we're going on tour in a couple in three weeks so I guess we need to have a set so we emailed everyone and we're like hey we're actually a band now but most of the people doing our shows were our friends anyway so it wasn't a big deal. So we, we were like, like burning CDRs the night before we left on tour and like um, painting yeah. off covers and I I made like zines. That we're giving out. How we live and tour is pretty different than most bands. I mean, when we tour, we go camping and we take days off to go swimming. And like, you know, the first couple of tours, we had surfboards with us and just like, you know, just mm -hmm. like we're. I don't think we tour like most bands because our, our. It's weird that we're even sitting here now because the incentive for us when we started was literally just an excuse to go on road trips. You know, it w I mean, we like making music, right. but essentially, it's funny that like. It was just going to be like a summer yeah. of doing yeah. that. And then here we are two years later, and it's like, it's kind of like... Um, but playing live is definitely excites you guys more than here creating and recording. Um, I, I think we like them both for different reasons. We work on music. I mean, I think we, I mean, I think we make, we're making music every day almost, it mm -hmm. seems like, or something. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm at least recording some little snippet of something every day. Mm -hmm. and That we, fits our short attention spans, too, though, the way we work. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can just record like a little thing here or there. Like we'll be like doing emails or something and I'll just be like messing around in a recorder and then Rob will just hit record and then we'll just save that. Or wow. some, and sometime. archive it. I mean we have probably like, you know, 300 times more recorded stuff than we'll ever need, you know, to make songs. It's just that we're archiving. Right. And Someday then, we'll just make a box set of all the like little samples, <laughs> make it public domain so people can just use them. Or something. Just a, a little bit of the the sort of story. Um, mm -hmm. You were talking about your pre high places life and music, yeah. and is it is it safe to say that it was at least somewhat in a classical vein? Yeah, totally yeah. in a classical vein. Yeah. Um, I played in a band starting when I was um, nineteen mm -hmm. in college, and I like begged my friends they were starting like this new wave band and I was like you have to have a bassoon I know it sounds <laughs> weird it's like might be a little gimmicky but you should let me try it mm -hmm. so I was playing like bassoon and bass and keyboards in this band for a little while and our singer quit and I refused to sing I was like we can't have a girl singer it will sound all wrong my voice is all wrong it's very choral mm -hmm. it's not loud mm -hmm. can't do it and then finally like um, I, I ended up singing and um, and then I did a solo project after that, and then that's when I met Rob. And the solo project was you and Bassoon? Me, yeah. Bassoon, totally acoustic. Um, tapes. I had, yeah, I did have cassette tapes um, of like field recordings I made walking around town, just like leaves, 
um, like under my feet and a clock and a street musician up the street. Um, so different sounds like that would be like at the base of whatever? Yeah, just basically yeah. so I could go between bassoon and singing and there wouldn't right. be this awkward pause. There'd right, be right. something going on. And then I had like a bell kit on my lap uh -huh. and like a shaker between my knees. Wow. And, uh, and I would sit very down dexterous. and hold yeah. my bassoon. <laughs> So I could kind of be going in, but I mean, very like one man band, one woman band, but um, you were actually planning to go to music school that fall, right? Right for grad school. Yeah, for grad school. And I totally derailed you. <laughs> I always had this like dream of moving to New York, and I thought I would do like weird avant-garde bassoon stuff. <laughs> um, I have to let you guys go soon, but just finally, I want to ask. I know that you sort of back in May of '06 were like, okay, we'll just see where this goes and mm -hmm. how long it lasts, et cetera. And now, more than two years later, I, I mean, I think, talking about pop music, I think weirder things have happened than High Places really being embraced in a more sort of mainstream way. Um, are you happy with whatever comes your way in terms of attention? I mean, if this record, you know, I'm thrilled jockey. Top 40. I mean, who knows? I, I don't know. Like but I, I is that is that all is that all good with you? I mean, you're not I looking mean, to remain niche. No, I mean, I think one thing that's really important to us is like high places is not just the music we make. It's the fact that we're two people who are platonic, you know, but like really close friends and spend well, like people an probably assume you're not right, yeah. right. We, I mean, we probably spend an unhealthy amount of time together, <laughs> but like it's really based on our friendship and. We've like made art together and done things like that, and that's all just kind of high places, you know. Mm -hmm. I, th I think us getting brunch together on a Sunday morning is like high places, you know, like all of that. And so, as long as we can still feel like it's us, you know, then yeah. I, I don't think that we don't really see like a limit to it. I don't think we would suddenly like put the brakes on and be like, no, stop, like mm -hmm. this is our band and we don't want it going there or something. I mean, we t we just kind of take everything as it comes, and I think that's how we've always been. We. We want things to just go naturally. We don't want to be like shoved down people's throats, and we don't, we don't want it to seem like um, anything but like an organic process. And I think honest. that in every sense of like what we're doing, we just want it to be like honest. This is what we do. Take it or leave it. You know. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I mean, the, I mean, like, like we basically have only put out really limited seven inches. But we just said yes to friends saying, "Do you want to do this project? Do you want to do this? It's not mm. like a calculated thing. We never, yeah, we never, we, we don't never. have this like this schedule somewhere with like, okay, by next year this is where we should be. This is like what what kinds of places we should be playing and how many records we should sort of yeah. should have sold. We have no idea, you know. It's yeah. ever we, since we started, we were like, we might be the only two people who are like okay with this music, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah we never had. I mean, we we, we basically. Like we've never like even when we tour like most of the time when we toured up until recently we've never even had anything to sell with us like we would have records and we'd sell out of them like it's like kind of stupid and if we'd, you're we'd, touring and not having any merch we mm -hmm. toured so many times without having any records or anything to sell we've never made T-shirts not that we we're against them but we just haven't gotten around. we just haven't been able to afford the seed money to make T-shirts or had the time and so like we kind of feel like everything we've done has been basically just based around I guess playing as much as we can and playing shows and touring. So I guess I feel like it took us so long to just put out a record, and I guess we're just not on a schedule with it, except that we just, you know, I, it just, for me, it just feels like, ultimately, like, if we never got any more well-known than we are right now, like, I, I'm, I mean, we're surprised that we're even, like I said, we're even sitting here, so, like, like, I feel like if, if we never had more pop, popular than we are, I, I feel like we've We'd just already continue done to do it, though. I yeah. Think if it's just for ourselves, we'd still do it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds corny to say, but like, I mean, it's just. Might have to get day jobs again, but. <laughs> There's always the bassoon. There's always the bassoon. Sure. But I mean, you know, so I guess that, yeah, I mean, we're just happy. We were happy when the first summer when we were losing money on yeah. tour. Well, I think it's an amazing record, and your story is really fascinating. I just hope it continues as the year goes on. And more and more people discover you guys. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us.